THM The Show presents me, Pablo Gunner, and my guests right here from the podcast that wouldn't die. What's up? This is Kevin. And this is Aaron. We're here to talk nerdy to me. We're going to talk nerdy to each other about nerdy things, of course. Bad Batch and Mandalorian, right? And then just whatever nerdy stuff happens. I, I, I know I haven't seen The Bad Batch. I gotta be honest with you, but I'm I'm down for uh, for pretty much anything you can sling at us. No okay. question. Well, I, I won't spoil anything then. I'll just say like, <laughs> please don't. I'll just say that Bad Batch. It's season two. I feel like this season wasn't as good as the first season. I'd, I'd have to rewatch it, but may, or maybe it was similar to the first season, where it just kind of seems like random episodes, and then it comes together somehow well in the finale or two part finale. Okay, it makes sense how we got here, but it was just kind of like all over the place on the way it didn't seem like it was connecting along the way that much there'd just be like little snippets and then when you got there you go like okay i see how they did it i feel like i feel like it could have they could have found a way to do it better, but it was still done well. You know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad batch? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Aaron doesn't know what we're talking about. This is Star Wars shit. Yeah, Star Wars. Uh, yeah, just, yeah. That's, that's fine. I, I had some things to catch up here. It's all right. <laughs> Light reading? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so speaking of extreme governments and cults, The Mandalorian. Love it. Season three. That recently uh, finished up. I, I don't know about you, but I, I watched The Book of Boba Fett. I, I enjoyed it. I, I liked it. But there was... It kind of sucked, though. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but there was two episodes that were legitimately... The Mandalorian. Yes. And and so if you didn't watch that, you were just like, oh, why is he here? And in the show, they didn't really explain it or show a flashback or, or anything. They just were like, oh, he's back with me and that's it. So so how was that as an explanation for, for you? Well, I mean, they, they do that a lot on The Mandalorian where it's like, here's this huge quest. For, and then in the, the first episode of the next season, like, oh, yeah, we're done with that. We're good. Moving right along. We found I haven't finished season three yet. Okay. I'm only halfway through. Um, but I also have a question about how, how did they take this character, Boba Fett, who was so cool. When we first see him in Empire Strikes Back, you're like, damn, he is dynamite. He and is then, of course, Return of the Jedi, he just falls into the Sarlacc pit for no reason. You know <laughs> what I mean? And now, <laughs> and now mm -hmm. on, on the book of Boba Fett, he basically gets his ass kicked in every fight he has. It's a, it's a sad situation. Is he cool because we didn't know that much about him? And now that they're kind of pulling back the, the curtain, then it's like, uh, well, actually, the Mandalorian is kind of cooler now. I, it's a multitude of things. I mean, for me personally, I never liked Boba Fett. I never thought he was cool. I always, oh, damn. I always thought he was a joke because he gets taken out by a blind guy into the Sarlacc pit. Now, I read the extended books and I heard he guts out and he... He becomes the leader of Mandalore in the in the books that are no longer considered canon. But in this canon, he survives, which is, it's different, but it works the way that they did it. I mean, I don't know. For, for me, I go like, he's an older guy, and you're passing the torch, sort of, and he's, yeah, this guy's not as cool, this guy's cooler, because he's the younger, shinier version. And that's and that's what they're doing. At the same time, it's like, well, then why did they make him seem so cool in The Mandalorian, though? Like, he was really awesome and hardcore in The Mandalorian in Season 2. Why couldn't you continue that into his own show? And and I really wish they would have done more of that instead of focus on, on The Mandalorian. It was like, why did you give those two episodes up and those should have been right. part of Season 3? And instead, what you should have been doing is, okay, now that he's recovered, show how he's awesome again. Right? Like, show him training with, with all these different beasts. Then they just left it alone, and then, oh, oh my god, we forgot about this, he showed up with this beast. And it's like, oh, but he didn't really have control of it, though. It just rampaged the city and destroyed everything <laughs> that he was... He was like, up your lives! At the same time, it was like... And then he's still, like, the savior instead of, like, the guy that really ruined everything. 
in the end. I still think they could have... I did like how they kind of like humanized him and made him seem like, hey, I want to protect where I'm from or I want to protect these people. They protected me, you know, and all these things. The idea, they didn't really stick with it. This is failing, so we're going to show this or or we're going to set up the next season of Mandalorian in, instead. So Right. I mean, I guess what it comes down to is do you want your... Boba Fett or Mandalorian to be like the Terminator, where every time he faces a challenge, he kicks its ass, like easily, like a Steven Seagal movie. Steven Seagal never loses a fight, ever. He's he's 60 pounds overweight. It does not matter. He's, he's breaking somebody's arm, right? He's 107. He's, he's 107. pounds overweight. His ponytail's down to just three hairs strung together. <laughs> it's a sad he's situation. He's kicking ass. He's beating the shit out of 20-year-olds. But there's no drama in that. It's really what it comes down to. When that when that happens, then you just you kind of it gets boring after a while. So you have to kind of make them vulnerable, like you were saying, kind of reveal the humanity of the character. But conversely, if you reveal your vulnerability because you're getting your ass kicked every time you appear on the scene, it, it's a hard you know balance to strike. I, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I I just think it's weird too. It, it's for me. I there's I feel like there's this resurgence or this surgence of stuff going on now where it's like these old men that somehow they are able to just destroy dudes that are that are more than than half their age. Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. <laughs> I'm happy I can jump up to a wall that I could do five years ago. I haven't right. done it. Let me see if I can still do this. Yes, I work out every day, or, or not every day, but I work out. You know, I'm consistent. There's no way I. There's no way that that 50 year old me can be 25 me. Like, there's no way. Right. So it doesn't make I mean, sense you can't me. jump out of an airplane while doing karate when you're <laughs> 72 years old. When you, you think that's fiction? What? All these movies and shows where it's like nobody and, and John Wick and, you know, all these things where I'm like, Hey, I understand, like, you have these skills. You just can't beat somebody that's half your age with the same set of skills. It doesn't make sense to me. You have Boba Fett, and then you have Mandalorian. And the thing is that in Mandalorian, he still gets beat up. Like, the Din Djarin, he, he still... Does. He falls, he gets still gets beat up, he still loses fights and stuff here and there. And and that's kind of like part of this new season. Just them showing more of this this religion and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I just feel like you can't outdo Luke Skywalker showing up, which it's like you built two seasons to this, and Luke's Luke Skywalker showing up and just destroying these undestroyable robots and stuff, and I'm like, you can't outdo that. Like, how are you gonna how are you going to outdo that? You can't. Like now, I read somewhere that that wasn't actually like that was all computer like generated. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't even like motion capture. It was literally the whole body of uh, Mark Hamill was was computer generated. Did you hear something like that as well? That sounds terrible. I'm so over that bit. So it's, over a that bit. it's a thing. It's a thing. I know like, it is. I know see, it is. In, in John Wick, there are parts where he's in the car. And his, I see his face, and it's tracking the camera. I'm like, this is all CGI bullshit. This is just CGI. <laughs> There's something to be said for, you know, old-fashioned stuff. But but it's like Peter Cushing in, uh, what was that, Rogue One, when they kept uh, having, like, dude's been dead for 40 years. Can we agree <laughs> that if you're dead, you should be able to just rest, and, and Hollywood <laughs> has to stop? trying to make some freakish version of you to terrify us all. Started with The Sopranos, I think. That was a bunch of shit. I think they have to get permission from their families, which, hey, you know, I mean, if their families want to profit, I guess that's on them. Great-grandchildren of Peter Cushing are like, hey, send us a check, whatever. Send us a check. <laughs> Kevin, I might have to get you to sign something just in case you go first, and I might just need to... With my chat GBT or something, they can whip up something. Well, I, I want to say uh, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate for joining me on this on this little quest to talk nerdy. What what all do you do on your podcast? What do you talk about and cover and get into? We're the podcast that wouldn't die. We typically talk about horror and sci-fi films, mostly horror. Twist. Mostly, okay. It's probably 80-20, maybe, wouldn't you say? <laughs> horror to sci-fi. I, I mean, in we all honesty. We more sophisticated to say we also review science fiction. We, we do. Okay. 
Our next movie that we're going to talk about is The Last Starfighter. So we're trying to, to thread it in a little more if you haven't seen that late. And we haven't either. So we're going to check that out for the first time in 30 Oh, years. you haven't seen that? I thought that no. would be a pure Kevin thing. It is a pure Kevin thing. No question. <laughs> we pick these movies. Oftentimes, they're movies from our youth, as you might imagine. And we try... we tend to goof on it because we're trying to be kind of humorous but i think we're fairly respectful except for aaron maybe yeah i'm not respectful <laughs> you have to earn my respect and you're not earning it with some of these films that are coming out damn it um, that's how that's dare upset. you we have a good time okay yeah I, I mean from from your title i surmise that maybe like you've been doing this longer than anybody and i go like that's why it's the podcast that doesn't die but if you cover it's horror that makes more sense with your title and two it's like sci-fi like there are elements where there is like that sci-fi horror, like alien and stuff right. like that the survivor sci-fi stuff but back to our title that was a good guess but that's not why <laughs> we, we used to have a youtube series the b movie club where we, it, we called it b movie and maybe it started with b movies then it was just random movies and no one watched it so so we quit we decided we have faces for podcasts so it was recommended by a nephew so we resurrected because we will not die we just keep going going. we just although we have we have a new youtube uh simulcast so if you if you're dying to see what we look like here you go enjoy because really it costs us nothing to just put it out there how dare you this is a work of art Kevin's the editor. Okay, awesome. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey heard nothing. <laughs> so, and then if your kids, uh, they, they sign off to use your likenesses, they can continue it on. Like crusty old like Peter Mac Cushing storms. That, that's the plan. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> that's the plan, yes. <laughs> Good Lord. Awesome. So where can we, everyone out there, find you? We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We've been doing these WTF videos where we take uh, the craziest scene of whatever movie we reviewed that week, and we put that on TikTok, put that on Instagram. And like I said, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, and we're on YouTube. We're everywhere. There's there's no escaping us. Beware. Awesome. Okay, do you have any final words? Live long and prosper. For us, it's all TNTM, the show, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, Gmail, Hotmail, everything. Oh, me on TikTok, Pablo Gunner, and uh, talk nerdy to me.